Chris. All right, looks good. Okay. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to Come Cook With Me. Um, just getting started here in the kitchen. And uh, today's recipe, uh, hey, thanks for some love. Thanks for the thumbs up. You know, one of the things I was thinking about when I was doing some of the prep work for today was how cool would it be, um, you know, because throughout the whole week, um, you know, various people will share this video and I always do a, a little giveaway um, for somebody who's actually sharing, sharing the Come Cook With Me episode on their Facebook page. I always do a little giveaway. Um, so why don't you, in the comments section, if you're watching, and especially if you're watching live, kind of just say where you're from. I think that's kind of fun to see how many places we've gone. I actually, um, you know, many of you who follow me know that I, uh, my father had passed just this last week, um, Sunday, and um, a lot of you, I had said I didn't, I missed yet because I had gone to visit him the week prior, and uh, <clears throat> we didn't have an episode, and I had a couple of comments saying, we missed you today, D did, did you not post it? And, um, one of the people, turns out the person was from Illinois and, um, you know, long story short, I just, you know, it, I was reflecting how cool would it be if everyone had a chance to say where they're from, where they're tuning in from. Um, and I know that my mother actually in her building, um, said a girl in her building that she lives said, Hey, did you know your daughter has a, a cooking show? And I always set my timer to watch it. <laughs> so... I thought that was really uh, amazing and cute too because you just never know who's watching and, and who's picking up and normally at the end of a week we'll probably see about, I don't know, sometimes I think the highest viewers that we've had is like 2.5 thousand um, uh, and we haven't even posted these yet to YouTube which we, we plan on doing, we just haven't had a chance to get there yet. We're getting close. Um, so today we are actually going to be doing a really fun favorite of mine. and. I know it's in the heat of the summer, and most people don't really love to have chili, right, in the middle of the summer. So I'm going to actually make this a little bit more watery, so it's going to turn out to be a little bit more like a chicken soup. But it is a chicken chili, white chicken, white bean chicken chili soup. But what's really cool about today's episode is I'm going to be using my Instapot. And I've got to tell you, if you don't have an Instapot, I was talking to my girlfriend Terry today, and she says, you know, I've been contemplating putting together, you know, the thought process of buying an Instapot, and I told her, absolutely, if you haven't invested in one of these quick, handy, dandy machines, you're missing out. Um, and it took me a while, because, like, I was like, oh, that looks really cool, you know, I'm not really cool, I'm not really, um, I was kind of afraid to do a pressure cooker, um, you know, just because of, like, old wives' tale stories from years and years and years ago, and Actually, one of the farmers from uh, in K Kentucky, um, he was actually the animals veterinarian, but he's one of the farmers in my, in my community it's back in Smithfield, and he was telling me a horror story when we were, we were weeding the vegetable garden. <laughs> he was telling me about his pressure cooker, and I thought, oh, I'm never going to have one of those. Um, you know, I didn't have to worry because I was really happy with my slow cooker, however long it took me. And I know, you know, years ago when the kids were growing up and we'd get, um, the teachers and I, we, we'd talk about our recipes that we were putting in our crock pots and some of the girls I used to run with, you know, we, you know, easily put the recipe together really quickly, throw it all in in the morning and we'd all come home from school and it would be, bam, it would be ready, beautiful, slow cooked meal. Um, well, what I really love about the Instapot, it's just like using a crock pot but so much faster. So you're going to see that. I'm going to um, do a couple of things today or show you a couple of things after I get this easy, quick meal put together. But some of you who don't know what an Instant Pot looks like, I'm going to turn this one around and show you what it looks like. Um, and you'll see, um, I actually left a chicken breast in there, but um, we're gonna, the chicken breasts are going to go in the bottom. But take a look. This is the Instant Pot, what it looks like in the front. If this is just my model. There's many models out there. Um, I don't even remember how I picked this particular model. I think I read something about it, and I had a coupon at Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, that 20% off coupon, so I used it. <laughs> 
um, save those coupons. You know, even if they expire, this is just another tip. It has nothing to do with the cooking show. But if that expires, it doesn't matter. They honor it. Bed Bath & Beyond is great at honoring it. But basically, it, this is a, um, has a, it, it has a little container inset on the inside. But what's really cool about it is that this lid goes on and it's, it, it actually slides on really easily. You got to get it locked in. So one part is locked in, you turn it, and that's it. It's locked in. And then there's a little dial. You can see it right here. And you just turn it to the closed position when you're ready to get started cooking. And then it does all the magic for you. I mean, it's amazing. So we're not ready to do that yet. So I'm just going to keep that off. Okay. You're going to be amazed at this, how easy this recipe is. And I might even have, it might even finish by the time the whole show is over, but we'll see. So we did some prep work. Um, and I'm going to show you the prep work and kind of talk about the things that we did. If you follow um, on Wednesday, I try to do the shopping on Wednesday, uh, right after I finish my workout class. And I try to post them live so you can see the ingredients that we get. And I do um, find that, you know, at the store that I particularly shop at right after I work out is, is Publix. Um, but I do tend, if I, I need to get some, you know, different ingredients, I'll end up going to like a Fresh Market or Trader Joe's um, just because they may have something different uh, to pull from. And I'm going to explain that in just a minute. Um, so. Let's talk about some of the things that we picked up at the grocery store. I picked up two sets of chickens and I want to talk about them. So I always try to do organic. Um, but you will see if you watched the video two days ago, you'll see the price point is quite a considerably different. And so if you're working on a budget, a shoot, you know, a really tight budget, you know, you're going to try to find the, try to find, if you cannot find organic chicken, then try to find ones that are not injected with horn. I don't think it did. Okay, good. Thank goodness. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to uh, put my phone on. Do not disturb. I need to remember to do that. I'm so sorry. So, okay, so but you're not always going to be able to get the organic, or it might be out of your price point for the particular meal that you're making. So then the next best thing is to just try to get um, chickens that haven't been in, um, in blasted with hormones, or that they're actually fed root free range. You'll see that as a as a as a a, a uh, caveat. So I'll show you the difference and I couldn't find organic. You'll see that. Uh, they didn't have the organic but they did have the green wise and the green wise are uh, the next best, best option versus and I'm going to show you versus having the plumped up chicken. Okay. So over here on this plate I've got the plumped up chicken. These have been actually injected with hormones. They're they're, you know, they, they were the least expensive. Um, and I'm just going to show you the, to compare the breast and the breast size. Just take a look at that. So one, this one here has been injected with hormones, plumped up. And they do this because they want, they think that, you know, you're getting a really good deal by having this great big plumped up piece of meat versus a normal piece of meat that has not had injection hormones. Um, that's really an important thing, what you're putting in your body. So I, I went ahead and bought this package. It's not a package I typically will buy, but again, if I'm in a pinch or I, I need to have the product, and I know when the kids were growing up and we had a tight budget, you know, I bought what we could buy, and that was just pretty much it. You know, you, you've got to do what you've got to do. So I'm going to teach you, if you went ahead and if you were and having to, to do this option, I'm going to show you some other options that you can do that will save you in some other other um, capacities as far as toxins that you're putting in your body. <clears throat> I'm not going <coughs> to excuse me. <clears throat> I'm not going to waste those. I'm going to actually use those and show you some meal prep ideas after we get this chicken started. Uh, after we get the uh, chicken chili started. So what's really great about this recipe is so simple. I've got one chicken breast in here, and I think I'm going to be able to fit six in total. So you're going to start in your Instant Pot putting the meat down first. I'm going to stick with just the six breasts, the chicken breasts. You can do this with chicken tenders, um, chicken, you know, some, if you like white and dark meat together. Um, 
you know, whatever your family's preference is, it's perfectly fine. It's just great. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you, and this was a little bit of pre-work. Um, and it's going to be saving you so much money, as well as additional, um, you know, things that you don't want to have in your body. So I'm going to talk about it. Um, I bought three different kinds of beans. And I buy the dried beans. I always prefer to cook with dried beans, but they are a little bit more work. So we're going to talk about the prep that I actually did the last day. Um, but in, in these pots, you're going to see I have some navy beans. I have some great northern beans that I put in. And then I found these really cute pink beans. They're like a pinto, a little bit of a kidney slash pinto. You'll see what they look like in a minute. But they were all dry, dry in the back, right? And I think... This was a dollar twenty-five. You know, very inexpensive, very good cost savings. So here's the deal: when you're cooking with beans, they're dry, so you have to do what's called a pre-soak. And all you need to do is put your beans in a pot, just put them on the stove, no no temperature, nothing, just let them soak. Now a good soak is you know anywhere between eight and you know twelve hours. Now if you can go beyond that, that's even better. So if you remember to put them in, that's the key. But if you have a Instapot, oh my God, you can have Insta beans right away, even from the very, being very dry. And so there's an actual recipe when you get your Instapot. And there's a ton of Facebook groups with Instapot um, recipes. So if you want some more information on that, just write a question down below. But these are the navy beans. And what I did is, I'm just gonna show that to you really quickly. I put these in the pot. I actually, when I got home on Wednesday, that's when I, they went into the Instapot. Just gonna get a plate, slotted spoon. So you can see what they look like. I'm gonna just hold it over here so you can see. So what I did is after I had them soaking, I soaked them for over, uh, well, it was over 24 hours. Um, and what I did is, uh, when I got home this afternoon to prepare for today is I switched out the water because you do definitely want to rinse them after you have the pre-soak. Rinse them, fresh water, and then you can actually cook them. So you're going to cook them for about 30 minutes, no more than that, really, because um, you don't want them to get too soft because they're going to get soft when you're actually cooking them, softer when you're cooking them, and you want to have them hold up. So that's how simple it is. I mean, now, let's say you forget. I know uh, there's lots of times, oh my gosh, I forgot to put on the uh, butter beans or you know whatever, whatever bean it is that I'm working with. So there's a flash cooking, if you're not gonna use the Instapot, there's a flash cooking. And again, you rinse them, rinse them with really great water, then fill your pot and you can cook them for two hours. Just let them cook, 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 keep adding liquid. Rinse them again and let them sit for an extra half an hour. So that's a really quick way to be able to get those, get your beans plumped up. Um, but again, if you can soak them overnight, it's even better. So those were the navy beans that I just showed you. Let me show you the other two. I put in the great northern beans and I put the pink ones in here so you can see what they look like. Now, when you see, I'm going to hold this pot up, but this is how beautiful they look. Look at how gorgeous those look. Just spectacular. <laughs> um, but. When you have all of these beans, now I'm not going to be able to use all of these beans in this pot, right? That's, that's kind of silly and ridiculous. Um, I'm going to use these for meals. These are great to stir fry. Once you get your beans made, so if you do a whole bag of beans, you can use them for meals throughout the rest of the week. And that's what I really love about cooking with um, soups or uh, uh, making a chili or whatever. I mean, whatever you're cooking with, you can utilize these ingredients the rest of the week, which is just beautiful. Um, and they store well in the refrigerator. But I mean, if you look at those two bag of beans, these are the pink ones. Can you see how many beans are in there? That's just amazing. So again, I did the same thing. These were, uh, um, they were uh, just in the, in the water for uh, you know, a soak, and they were in the water for um, 24 hours, and then I did a uh, 20 minute, 30 minute uh, cook of these beans and now they're ready to use. It's just so easy. Okay, so let's say you don't want to do the beans, right? I'm going to show you another option. And I'm going to talk about 
uh, BPA in a little bit, but this is just another option and it was what was in the store. So I'm going to talk to you about reduced sodium beans and then, oop, that, both of them are reduced, and then non-reduced where it doesn't say that it's reduced sodium. Big, big difference, big difference. So whenever you're buying, a, if you're buying a canned whatever or a chicken stock or what have you, you want to get reduced sodium. You do not need the extra sodium. You do not need the extra salt. It's just not, not a good thing. Right? So, I'm just going to show you, I'll read to you the difference. It's a big difference. So, if you look at sodium content in the reduced sodium, it's 130 milligrams for the can. And then for the reduced sodium for this, it's 460 milligrams. That's a lot of salt. You don't need that extra salt. So, guess how much extra salt's in these? Guess. <laughs> So if you can forego getting the cans and have savings. Now, I was at Publix and they had a, you know, uh, sometimes they have a BOGO, buy one, get one free. Um, sometimes they have, uh, what, you know, buy 10, 10 for 10. So you're buying a dollar a can versus, so one can is a dollar versus a dollar and maybe 30 cents and look at all those beans. So you can see where you can have a lot of savings. Yeah, I know you like that one, right? Okay, so it, to me, I, I just think it's a no-brainer. And so a lot of people say, okay, well, you cook all those beans. You know, how do you know how much to put into a pot? Well, so you just go an average, you know, if you just look, again, just do the math from a can. It says that there's about a half a cup per serving in here, and there's about three servings. So that's about a cup and a half, right? Or a cup and a quarter. So if you think there's a cup and a quarter in here, that's all you're gonna do is you're scoop out a cup and a quarter for your pot. Now this recipe actually called, uh, I'm doubling this recipe, so um, I'm just gonna do about four cups of beans, but I'll see how it, how it all puts in, how it goes into here. Okay. So obviously for that reason alone, I'm not gonna go ahead and use any of those cans because I've already done my beans, they're ready to go. So I'll just put these off to the side now, I'm going to talk about one other item, and it's a huge savings, huge savings. <laughs> All right, so bone broth versus chicken stock uh, or a vegetable stock. So uh, you can buy a bigger bone broth, this, this like this, in this container size. Um, at the current store that I was at, Wednesday, they don't have the big size. They only have the smaller size. So you just have to buy a few extra, extra. It's not a big deal, really a big deal. But here's why I choose to use bone broth. So, you know, what we wanna do is maximize our protein intake, right? Um, bone broth is made from how you get bone broth. Now, a lot of people, I have, I've got a ton of recipes where you can make your own bone broth. Um, but it's, you know, sometimes you just don't wanna have and take the time and I, I will do a cooking show where we actually just make a bone broth and I'll show you how to freeze it. Um, but I found that these are just so awesome. So let's talk about the bone broth versus the chicken stock. Okay, so this one, this is a kitchen, kitchen unsalted, again, unsalted chicken stock. And this one is an unsalted cooking stock. Okay, so there's a difference between a cooking stock and one that's labeled chicken stock. And I'm just gonna go with these two first. So, the cooking, this cooking stock here, if you read the label, read the label, it tells you how it's created. So it's made, it made from dehydrated chicken. <laughs> that sounds really appetizing, doesn't it? And then this one is chicken stock, is made from natural chicken, but also just a chicken flavor. So a chicken flavoring is the same thing. So, really, really have to watch and, and look at what you're buying. So if you read the label from a chicken bone broth, you're gonna see this is, a, this is made, chicken broth is made from bones organic, organic, also organic. That's the reason why I buy this particular brand is because it's gluten-free, it's organic, um, and so your grams of protein, let's just talk about the grams of protein. There is, there is a high sodium content in this compared to an unsalted sodium content, but it's worth 
the trade-off because you're not getting sodium from anything else. It's so worth the trade-off because you're getting um, 10 grams per serving of, and a, a serving is a, a cup, 10 grams of protein, okay? So the protein content in one of these is half. It's half. So higher protein, less salt, okay? It's either one, but you're going to get more protein in these. And you know, you can actually mix and match. I've done that before too in several recipes. In fact, I think you saw me do that when I did the uh, shrimp pasta. Okay. All right, so I've got the chicken in there and I'm gonna put in eight of these containers into, into the pot, into the Instant Pot. I think I'll start with six just to make sure I don't fill it up too much. And what's really nice about the Instant Pot, you can't overfill it. It gives you a line that says, don't go beyond, and so you won't go beyond that. Go beyond that. Okay, that's two. I don't know how many of you, um, you can actually buy your bone broth in a quantity and get a discount. Believe it or not, I mean, what can't you get on the internet now? It's just amazing what you can what you can buy. Yeah, I think I'm gonna start with that's all right. So I had eight. I'm gonna say three. I'm not gonna put all of them in to begin with because I have a few ingredients that um, I'm gonna be adding to this. So. We'll just get these last two in because I still want to get in my beans. And I want to put in four cups of beans. All right. So the last thing that I'm going to talk about is um, fresh vegetables versus canned vegetables. Okay. Now, most of you don't know this, but most of, many, not most, many of the vegetables that you might buy um, from you know, the canned goods section, they're going to have what's called uh, BPA in it, okay? So that's bisphenol, bisphenol A, BPA, are lined in the cans. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's kind of got a little plastic lining in it right here, the coating. And the, it's, many of the manufacturers will do this because they think that it's going to not let the vegetables eat through the can and then therefore not have as great a shelf life. Well, BPA is known to be, um, well, it's a hormone disruptor. Um, it uh, messes with your, it has sexual dysfunction mess, you know, mess with your hormones. Um, your, you know, it has studies to attain uh, to obesity. Um, it's just an, another toxin that goes into our body that we're eating, in ingesting toxins. And so there are some great, great companies out there that aren't using BPA as a lining in their cans. Um, and I'm going to, at, at the end of the show, I'm going to list a couple of articles that you can Google that I found great. And I can actually attach them to the bottom of this feed uh, so that you can actually look at them and read a little bit more about it. But, but you know, you, you want to have as few toxins as possible in you. And then I, when I was shopping on Wednesday, I shared with you how to avoid some of these toxins. If you do happen to buy a vegetable, a can of vegetables that have the BPA in it, what can you do? Well, this is a secret. This is something that I learned. And, and again, the, the, the studies and the articles on this, are, are they vary greatly. So I'm just going to share one secret of what I've done is, is like I've poured the canned vegetable in here and I rinsed the vegetables and then I'm letting them soak. So once I, this has been soaking for over four hours. So they're just soaking. Hopefully my intention is to leach some of that BPA out of the vegetable that it's, it, that, you know, that's soaked into the vegetable from being in the can. So I'll rinse it one more time, just like this. And this is, I love Italian green beans. I'm just a, a, such a huge fan of them. <clears throat> and so they're gonna go in the, in the soup. But what's going to be interesting is when you see the soup completed, you're not going to really see them. They're just the flavor is going to go in them. So 
So if you do another soaking, again, that takes that BPA, takes it out. Now, again, that's another reason why I don't use that, the can. And I'm not going to use that entire can. I'm just going to put in about, I'll leave a little bit extra. Okay. Now, the recipe calls for chili, green chilies. You can get green chilies in a can. And I showed you a couple of varieties when we were shopping. I'm not going to actually use these because I also bought fresh green chilies, which are jalapenos. So I'm going to show you out, just show you how I'm putting them in there. But you can get them diced in a can. And again, these are not, these have BPA in them. So if you were going to use them, rinse them first and then put them in. This is a really hot, hot, and this is a mild. On the side of the can, you can decide how hot you want your chili. For me, we love things hot in this house. So I put in two chopped jalapenos. Just going to dump them in. All right, so I have a couple of extra ears of corn, so I went ahead and took them right off the cob. I just took the cob of corn, right? It's fresh corn. And I shaved off, shaved it off. Really super simple. And I'm going to throw, throw the corn in. And then I diced up two full onions. The onions are just going to go in. Simple. And I love to have just a little bit of carrot. Anytime I'm cooking with chicken, I just think it's savory. It's beautiful. Okay. So the other thing I'm going to throw in is I'm just going to do a whole bunch of oregano. Just a bunch of oregano. I'm going to leave it all together just right there. It's just going to cook right in the Instant Pot. All right. Now, garlic. I have organic garlic. I like to crush my garlic to really get the, the flavors out. Some people like to have their garlic in chunks so that they can see them in their chili. So I'm going to take about six cloves of garlic and I'm just going to press them in. You'll hear that phone. I, should, I forgot to turn that phone off as well. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't you love that? So we, we live way out, I'll just share the story with you. So we live way out in the, uh, well, way back in the community near the Intercoastal. We're not on the Intercoastal or anything like that, but it's not too far away. But in order to get telephone service, um, it was very, very difficult. And to get cellular service, I actually had to have um, two different carriers and I have four different lines open so that I could have a de decent service. Um, but then for those moments when most people don't have a, a home phone, but because we live so far out here, not always do we have cellular service. So I have to have an actual house phone as well. Um, it just seems so crazy. But that's what happens when you live out, 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 out. It was like that when we lived in Smithfield as well, because we lived way out in the country. Oh, that's so beautiful. If you could just smell that garlic, it smells so beautiful. Now, again, your garlic, I think I talked about this the last time when I made um, shrimp pasta, and if you weren't following along with that particular recipe, garlic. I always try to buy garlic that's from the United States or Canada. Um, if you, most garlic that you're going to be buying, if you don't make sure that it is from those areas, if you're buying it, you're going to not be happy with how that garlic is grown outside of, I think, the U.S. And we have a great uh, Gilroy, um, California, and there's a, um, almost got some of the corn husk in there. Um, there's a great place in Florida as well. But Gilroy, I love Gilroy, California. If you're from Gilroy, do a thumbs up. Um, I love Gilroy because it's the, it's the like, garlic capital of the United States of America, it seems like. And they have garlic everything. And if you're ever out in California driving up the highway coast and you see the sign that, that says to get off at, um, get off at a Gilroy, do it. It's worth the trip. Um, I'm telling you, it's just a lot of fun. You can, they have everything, garlic, <laughs> things, garlic licorice. Uh, I mean, it, we thought we hit the jackpot the very first time my husband and I went on our, I think it was, I actually think it was one of our, First story was our second trip that we ever did after we were married. And we were visiting his brother 
Uh, and we're driving, we were driving up the coast uh, to go see him. We flew into Los Angeles, we're driving up, and it said, Gilroy, garlic capital. Well, way back then, you know, to get minced garlic, it was kind of like unheard of. It just wasn't around. And we saw this minced garlic, and we were so thrilled. We were so thrilled. Well, it was jarred in a jar, and we bought two containers, right? And we brought them home in our suitcase. Well, guess what happened and with one of the jars in the luggage? Yeah. <laughs> Just guess. Well, we got the luggage out and we're like, oh my gosh. So all the oil and all the garlic seeped through. I can only imagine what our luggage was next to. Whoever else, the poor people who had their luggage near ours, it, it was oil everywhere. And it just, it, our whole bag was full of garlic. We had to throw everything out that was in it. But it was a hysterical, you know, we thought, oh, you know. And the saddest part was is that we were, we were one jar less of our garlic. And we were so sad because it was all this minced garlic. And now, of course, this is like 27, 28 years ago. Um, so, you know, people, luckily we don't have to worry about that now. <laughs> but it's a true story, funny story. So I'm also going to, since I have the cloves of garlic in there um, already crushed, I'm going to throw in a few extra cloves because it's just going to make it yummy. So that they're nice and big chunks and people can have them if they like for their, their chili. Okay, now, next thing that we have to do is add a little bit of seasoning. So I'm gonna use about um, a quarter cup of cumin. And again, you know me, I don't measure anything. So, and then I'm gonna get some uh, red pepper flake. This is a new jar. I'm uh, covering the top. It's probably, oh, I'd say it's close to a quarter cup. And then I like to use a little bit of chili powder. Not as much. And then you're going to use a little bit of chipotle. Now, the chipotle is an optional feature, but I like the chipotle flavor. It's a little smoky. So it's just a little bit more of those red peppers, but it's got the chipotle flavor, chipotle pepper, actually. So, it's not the red pepper, but chipotle, so it gives it a little smokiness to it. And then, of course, we have Dano. So, Dano, if you're watching, this is actually going to be, for people who share this, this is going to be the gift. Um, if you're posting it on your wall, I look at how many people and how many places it was shared, and you'll get, um, you'll get, you'll have the chance to win these. Alright, so I know how much I'm going to use of this. And, I'm going to use, it's about, it's almost a quarter cup. Beautiful. And now all we have to do is mix that around, and I'm going to add those other two. Oh, I forgot the beans, yeah. I'm looking, it's like, oh, where's my beans, my chili beans? Let me grab those. So simple. Watch how easy this is, right? I'm just going to take a scoop. I've already rinsed these. This is all fresh water, so it's perfect. So I've got one. I'm going to do navy. I'm going to do one for one. Ah, oh, this is just beautiful. I hope you can see the top of the pot. If not, I'll, I'll somehow get that over there. Okay. Stir that up. And I believe I am at my max. I am totally at my max, so I'm glad I didn't put that other container in. And it's just beautiful, ready to go. It looks gorgeous. Okay, so I'll try to lift this up so you can see what it looks like. I'll tilt it up. Can you see in that? Do a couple thumbs up. Awesome. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh, if you could just smell this, it's just so beautiful. So the Instant Pot lid goes on really super easy. So that's not in the lock position, it's in the open position, so you're going to lock it, and you cannot move the, you can't move the lid. And then I put my dial at, at closed, it's closed, I'm going to push this back a little bit, and then 
I'm going to hit soup and stew. There you go. That's it. That's how simple it is. Okay. And when it is done, it will show a big whistle. It'll come up and um, you just release the pressure steam. And once the steam is completely gone from the machine, that's when you'll be able to open up the, open up the lid again. It's really that simple. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about um, some ideas for your uh, fork and knife meal and doing some, some food prep. And that, that was kind of the side benefit of having a really quick and easy recipe to follow, and that is to talk a little bit about our fork and knife meal. This is an excellent fork and knife meal. I mean, it's just really a no-brainer. It has some beautiful, great flavors, great protein. And what I'd probably serve with this, this chicken chili is I would probably serve a salad with it. Okay, so that's a great fork and knife meal. And so what are, what are we talking about when we say fork and knife? What's fork and knife mean? So in my nutrition system, you end up having two shakes a day, you end up having two snacks a day, and these are full meal replacement shakes. I think you've seen me talk about them a time or two, maybe. Um, but they're full meal replacement shakes, um, and then you do two snacks, really healthy snacks. I'm going to show you a couple snacks that um, I prepared last week on Sunday. Um, and then you have what's called a fork and knife meal, and I actually have a fork and knife meal here as well. So, and the fork and knife meal is a balanced meal that's full of protein, full of vegetables. Um, it's, really, it's, really about, it's really about having a great meal that's really well balanced um, and um, with between 400 and 600 calories. And that's really the objective. So, last Sunday, I showed you how easy it is to make quinoa. In the Instapot. It was, I made this in the Instapot. And it's still very good. It's so flavorful in here. It is the most yummy. Quinoa is one of those just excellent sources of um, protein that you can, can get. It's very similar to a rice, so I would substitute my rice with the quinoa. But this, just look, take a look at how beautiful that looks. This is still very fresh. It was, I made this on Sunday. It's still, I still use it. And here's how I use it in a wide variety of ways throughout the week. Um, I will actually use this as a stir fry. I'll mix it with um, some, I'll throw it in a pan, and I'll mix it with some egg whites. I'll mix it with one egg yolk, and then I'll put a ton of spinach and a couple of tomatoes on. It is so yummy, I can't even tell you. But how I made this is I made two cups, it was just two cups, two cups of quinoa in the, in the Instapot, and I used four cups of, of our bone broth. And so I made the quinoa with bone broth instead of water. Now you can go without, you can do it with fewer calories, but you're getting the protein, so why not? You know, this is just amazing. So I used four. So you, you, whatever number, you know, like in the Instapot, it's like two dry, four wet ingredients, equal sizes. And that's really a, a great rule, rule of thumb. So the quinoa is just yummy, just so yummy. So here's one of the meal things that I did, meal preps. This is one that um, I ended up, I was going to do um, just a one-day cleanse and I ended up doing um, a two-day cleanse. And so I didn't actually eat this particular fork and knife meal, but I wanted to show you what it looked like because this is really, really outstanding. So I had some chicken breasts and I barbecued them which I'm gonna take those extra chicken breasts and I'm gonna prepare them for some additional meal prepping. But this is the barbecue chicken. I had some vegetables that were thrown on. This is the quinoa. Um, and then I um, also grilled, oh, it, this, is, this is loaded with garlic. I grilled this um, cauliflower and this broccoli and I just smothered it with garlic, with garlic paste. Um, just yummy, 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 and I grilled it, and it was just, it's just these flavors, when you heat this up, it's just absolutely delicious. Now, let's talk about how I heat this up. See how I have it in a glass container? That's right. Well, I have it in a glass container for a specific reason. I like to put a little tin foil on it, and I like to heat it in the oven over a slow period of time, so it stays, keeps the moisture in. I know a lot of people use microwaves still, 
it's one of those things that I try not to. I try not to use the microwave for just about anything. I have, and you know, everyone does, especially if they're in a pinch, but it's so much better if you don't. The other way that you can heat this up is you can just put this right on the stove. I'd put a little bit of bone broth and um, you can transfer it to a pot or just leave it on in this because you can put, cook on the stove in your Pyrex and put a lid so it stays nice and tight and just let, let it slowly heat up and the moisture from the steam will heat everything thoroughly. Beautiful, beautiful way to use, use this. Now, What I'm going to do is, you see these green beans? I'm going to smother these green beans with Danos, the green part of Danos, all right? I'm going to smother these with Danos, and I'm going to grill them, okay? I'm going to grill them right alongside of those extra chicken breasts. And so some of the chicken breasts that I'm going to prepare, I'm going to do them now so you can see how I do it. So simple. And my husband just got home, so he knows he's going to have to fire up the grill very soon. So I'll just transfer these big, bigger pieces of chicken breast so they don't go to waste onto this plate. And what's great is we have my godchild's birthday party is tomorrow. And uh, we're going to have the family over afterwards. So her favorite thing is, is godfather, godfather breads, ribs. So we're going to have ribs and we'll have a little bit of chicken. Um, so I'm going to actually get these kind of set to, to marinate. Um, but I'm going to flavor them with the Danos. I love the spices of a Danos. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the spice right on top. And I'm going to flip them. So good. I also use, I'm a very big cumin person. So I'm going to go ahead and do these up with cumin. Now, some of them I'm going to barbecue and some I'm not going to barbecue. Uh, and they'll just have the rich flavor that's going to be coming, you know, just from the spices that we're putting on top. But I do love to use some fresh garlic on top of the chicken breast. And just let it sit there. So I'll squeeze that on top. It almost becomes a little bit of a paste on top of the chicken. You'll see what I mean. And again, if you have the garlic paste that you get in the from the jar, that's that's great. Or the mince that you get, that's perfect. I have this and it's organic and it's handy and I hate it when they go to waste. So it's always good to once you open a jar to try to use it within that first week. Otherwise it kind of tends they tend to go bad once the air hits them. Get one. Two more cloves on it. So, the reason why some of them aren't going to get barbecued is because I'm going to use them for my meal prep. And I really love doing um, chicken and I love doing fish for my meal prep for the week. I do a little bit of fish, a little bit of chicken, and a few, um, not a few, but just maybe one or two um, pork chops for my meal prep. And I'm just going to get that all smeared in on top of the chicken, let it sit. And I'm going to actually cover these. Now, if Brad were here watching me, he'd say, Laura, you needed to put a little olive oil on top of the chicken. Um, and he's absolutely right. I should have done that first. I didn't have it handy right here. <laughs> but you'll get the idea. So if you kind of coat your chicken with a little bit of avocado oil or olive oil, really good um, EEOV, little extra virgin olive oil, um, and then that's how they look. So they'll go on the grill, and some of them will get my barbecue sauce, and some of them won't. Um, here, just set those over there. And that's it. Okay. So chicken and vegetables, that's really where you want to go. Um, it's all about your protein and it's all about the vegetables. So that's what I try to do for my fork and knife meals. Um, and it's really that simple. It's, it's really that easy. <laughs> that's what shake days look like. Um, and that's what we call a shake day. So when you have a shake day, you're really eating quite a bit of food. 
All right, so I always end the show now, or I'm starting to end the show with three questions. Now, I forgot to poll the questions um, ahead of time, and I thought, well, maybe you have some questions that you've actually asked here, and I will take a look at them. But I didn't poll the questions, so I thought, well, what are the typical questions when people do um, uh, a search on BPA? That's what I did. And so it says, um, the first question I wrote down when I did a Google search, it says, can I rinse the BPA off? Well, when you do a little Google search on that, you're going to get 50-50. Some people say yes, the way that I showed you is a great way to do it. Um, then another one that said, well, it's kind of effective, it's really not that effective. And the article was really trying to steer you more toward making sure you use fresh whenever you can and or go to those sources that actually don't use the BPA in, in their canning process. And there are several companies, there's so many com great companies out there that um, don't use the BPA. So you, Trader Joe's is really known for not having products that have BPA, but you really want to go to the actual kind of company. Um, and so I wrote down, and I'll put this down in the, in the comment section, but there's a Mother Jones report that you can Google, um, and it'll tell you all of the companies that don't use uh, BPA. There's another report, it's called the Tree Hugger Report. I love that report. So you can even subscribe to these and try, you know, just get become more aware of the kind of products that you're putting in your body and, and try to stay away from those hormone inhibitors, right? Um, and then there's the Mother Nature Network. So I found those as, as well. I thought those were great. But you know, when you do a little bit of research and you look at what BPA does, you know, they used to have a lot of BPA in, in our water bottles, and so um, that was really, really, really bad. And you know, it's not, it's not an unusual thing that we're finding um, so many people that are having um, issues with trying to get pregnant because these are hormone disruptors. So they disrupt the pattern of how our hormones are working in our body um, and creating all kinds of stresses that our cells are just not ready and used to or need. I mean, it's just completely tearing our, you know, destroying the insides of our bodies, if you will. Um, so the other thing is, is, you know, asthma, this is a great article, I'm going to post it below, but they were talking about how, you know, asthma is a relationship orientation to the BPA that are found in the cans. Um, and then breast cancer, and then sexual dysfunction. I, I, found, I read that and I was just like, well, that's a no-brainer, it just makes so much sense when you're a hormone disruption, um, yeah, a hormone disruptor. So the other question that I had, it says, can I cook with plastic? No. <laughs> no, no, no. No cooking with plastic. If you have a plastic container that you're using for storage, please, please, please never heat your plastic up or never defrost in a microwave with a plastic. Um, I, you saw when I made the barbecue sauce that I actually put it in a plastic container. I try to use mostly glass containers. But when you cook in that big of a quantity, so maybe use your plastic, um, look for plastic that's BPA free, number one, but don't ever cook anything in a plastic, okay? Please promise me, no cooking in plastic. Okay, <laughs> that's a huge no-no. That's how we're getting more and more of those toxins that are just naturally coming into our body from what the foods that we're eating are, are cooking in, right? So you wanna cook um, without, you know, Plastic, no cooking with plastic. All right, and the other question that I wrote down is, can you use a microwave? Well, again, I'm going to say, I always say, if you're gonna cook, try to use your stove, try to use your oven, try to use your grill. If you're cooking or heating something up, um, okay, I get it, you just need it quick. So that that's okay. But other than that, if you need something really quick, it, it takes maybe, uh, you know, an extra 60 seconds to cook it on the stove, especially if you're flash cooking your, your vegetables. I mean, I used to be notorious for making my asparagus in the microwave. Well, why? It tastes just as great and even a little bit better when you're cooking it in bone broth right on the stove um, in your pans. And then you can add a few things and you can actually see how, how it's cooking and, 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 and just, just no, no more, no more microwaves either. <laughs> Okay, that's it for, for all of the questions. But if you have any additional questions, feel free to um, post them below. 
Remember, if you share this video on your personal wall, I'll see that it's been shared and you'll be entered in to win a, a spicy and a traditional Dano spicy, spices. These are fabulous. They come from Kentucky and Dano is the chef who's on our team um, in my nutrition company. And he always has low sodium, big flavor, zero calories. That's what I love about these. So uh, he's got a couple of recipes on the back, but what's so awesome about them is that if you look at his, his ingredients, low sodium, no sugar, gluten-free, no MSG, and no GMO. Outstanding. And Dano, I gotta tell you, thank you so much for sharing this with me and sharing these spices. I absolutely love them. Okay, that is it for Come Cook With Me. I um, hope you enjoy this recipe. I will show you the finished version when this Instapot is finished. And, um, uh, and again, um, have, a, have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I hope that uh, everyone has a blessed, blessed day. All right. Can't reach it. All right, see you later, everybody.